Hey guys, James here with Northwest HVAC in Spokane, Washington. Today I'm going to start the first of a three-part series on recovering refrigerant, pulling a vacuum, and recharging an air conditioner. And the reason I want to make it three parts instead of one big part is I'm trying to keep these videos short and simple for you guys so they're easy to watch, quick to reference, and all of that kind of stuff. So one thing I do want to point out is you're going to notice that my machine is sitting on top of the air conditioner like the way you guys always do it in the field and you'll notice that I have a piece of cardboard down to protect the customer's equipment. Now that doesn't matter too much here in our lab but out in the field you guys have to respect the customer's equipment and uh, they own that stuff you don't so you need to make sure you're very careful about where you set your tools and your machines and stuff um, when you're working on this equipment because on top of the air conditioner is a very convenient place to put your machines but they vibrate around and stuff and they could scratch up the customer's equipment and maybe damage something so always be cautious put some kind of cover down before you set your machines to begin your work so that being said let's start our first part which is the refrigerant recovery okay let's start with the tank so if this tank is empty the first thing you'll need to do is pull a vacuum on the tank so it's a little bit of a cluster with all these hoses everywhere because I have my gauges set up here on the tank and then I also have some gauges over there on that unit that we're going to be recovering uh, so for illustration purposes what I have here is the blue hose off of my gauge set I hooked up here to the vapor knob of my tank and then the red hose off of my gauge set I have coming up here to this micron gauge and then since this is the kind of micron gauge that has a T on it then I had to use a, an additional hose to run over here into my red so we want this micron gauge to be as close to the item that we're pulling vacuum on in this case the tank as possible um, versus putting it down there on the vacuum pump where guys like to put it sometimes so this one already has refrigerant in it so I'm not actually going to pull a vacuum um, but you would hook up like this and then you're gonna want to turn on your vacuum pump and let that establish a vacuum on your on your uh, micron gauge here and once you see that you have established a good vacuum on your micron gauge then that proves that all your hoses are good nothing's leaking your micron gauge is reading your vacuum pump is working all of that kind of stuff and then once you verify all of that then you'll just open up these two valves on the tank and you'll let it suck away until the tank gets down to 500 microns or below so let's illustrate that theoretically I'm not going to open these valves but I'm going to go ahead and let that pull down to 500 microns and I'll show you what it would look like when you're done pulling a vacuum on your tank okay so I'm going to explain this before I do it so I don't have to talk over the vacuum pump running so as we showed earlier on the tank we hooked up our red and our blue hoses off of our manifold and it doesn't matter which side you hook those onto at this point in time we're still going to pull from both sides either way um, I try to keep the colors the same but that really doesn't matter and then you can see that the red is in line with our T vacuum uh, gauge our T micron gauge there and then an additional red hose comes up actually into the tank uh, just like we illustrated earlier and then the yellow comes around over here to our vacuum pump so the idea here is we're going to turn on the vacuum pump and we're going to open our gauges but not our tank yet and we're going to make sure that it establishes a vacuum down under 500 microns just pulling on the hoses and the manifold and then that way that tells me that all my hoses are good nothing's leaking um, everything's looking great and then once you get below 500 microns on just the hoses and stuff then you can go ahead and open the tank as I stated earlier that tank already has some stuff in it so I'm not actually going to open the tank but I will go through the whole process up to the point where I pretend to open the tank uh, so watch close here and we'll uh, kind of go through the steps that I just explained Now 
then once that micron gauge gets down to 500, and you know that you're pulling a good vacuum through your system, if it doesn't come down on you, you want to check the connection of your hoses. But my blue gauge is definitely reading 30. We just haven't hit the microns yet on the uh, micron gauge. So assuming we hit below 500, then my next step is I'm just gonna open up both of these valves and go ahead and let it pull vacuum on my tank until I get below 500 microns on the tank. And then I will close the tank first. And then after that, you can't screw it up. You can do whatever you want after that. Just disconnect everything. So as long as you close those valves first after you get down under 500, it's foolproof. So make sure right here is what's important, that tank. We wanna make sure we don't get air in there. So once we pull a vacuum, close both of these valves and then disconnect however you want after that because you can't screw it up. Okay, so this is our recovery setup. Uh, we have our, our normal blue on the suction line and we have our red on the liquid line uh, just like you would normally do and then those of course are coming up to your gauge manifold and then your yellow tube here the middle the refrigerant line it goes up here to the inlet of the recovery machine and it's labeled in and out you guys should be able to see that um, you know I had to go back a little ways to get all this stuff in the video so if you need to you can zoom the video in you'll see in here out over there and these valves are showing closed. So you see that little swoopy thing gets wider on the open side, it gets skinnier on the closed side. So everything right now is closed. The knobs on the manifold, the knobs on the machine, the knobs on the tank. And as you saw earlier, we pulled a vacuum on this tank. So red and blue like normal, they come up to your manifold. Yellow comes over here to the in where the filter dryer is. And this, there should be one. If there's not, you should get one. Uh, this needs to be on there to protect the machine and, and it'll somewhat filter the refrigerant as it comes out as well. And then you're going to need a fourth hose. So you could rob it off of an old manifold set or maybe you got an extra one laying around or just go buy an extra hose. But you have to have the fourth hose from the outlet of the machine down over here to the inlet of the recovery machine. Now there's some debate as to what's better to go into the liquid of the tank or the vapor of the tank. And I told you guys uh, during the school year that uh, there's a dip tube on the liquid side that goes all the way down to the bottom of the tank to get the liquid out. And so it's, it's gonna go faster if you put it on the vapor pipe because uh, you don't have to fight that dip tube and gurgle it through any liquid that might be down here in the tank. It'll just dump it right in the top of the tank. So it's gonna go in faster. But truth be told, it doesn't matter which one of these two you hook onto. You just need from the outlet of the machine over here to the inlet of the tank on one of these. And I prefer the vapor one so I don't have to fight that dip tube in the tank. All right, so we'll, go, we'll get to the process now. Okay, so the first step over here is the purge process. So we know we got to purge our lines, right? So you could purge them right here from the system. Bleed them out that way on the red and the blue right but we have to purge the machine anyway and everything up to the tank so what I like to do is I kind of like to do it all in one process and just purge it right here so keep in mind that this recovery machine is actually a compressor and a condenser in here so it's gonna suck in the vapor refrigerant from your system it's gonna compress it and condense it and then it's gonna throw liquid refrigerant into this tank so if you just try to purge it now as it sits uh, you're probably not going to see liquid coming out of here and it's hard to tell when it's vapor that you got everything purged all the way through. We, we know we don't want air, right? Air is a bad thing. So we need to make sure we purge everything all the way through. So what I do is I open up my gauges, I open up my valves on my recovery machine, and then I'll actually start the recovery machine so it makes the compression and condensing process happen. And then it'll spray out liquid right here. And then I know that I have a uh, and everything's full of refrigerant and properly purged. So I'll show you just as an example here. If we open up these gauges, we open up that red, we open up this blue, and I like to open up all the way for full flow. So we'll open these up all the way. 
and then we're going to open up the valves on our recovery machine. We're going to just follow that flow of refrigerant. And it should come out of the machine, through the gauges, through the recovery machine, and now it should be ready to purge right there at the tank. So if I open this now, you'll see it's just some paper. So how do I know, since you can't see the vapor, how do I know that the machine's completely free of air and I have nothing but liquid coming up to here? So I like to start the machine, get the compressing action to happen, and you're gonna hear this thing kind of fart out a little bit. Um, that's just its self-protection because this valve isn't open yet. Uh, so don't worry about that, it's okay. Um, but I wanna show you that when you turn it on, we'll actually get liquid to spray out of here and then we know we're fully purged all the way through to our tank and we have no chance of getting air in our tank. So turn this on, open it here, got liquid, okay, now we know we got liquid spraying out here, and like I said, the machine's going to crap out on you, that's okay, but now we know we have liquid spraying out here, so we're ready to begin the recovery process, so I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is after you purge and you know you have liquid coming out of your tank, you want to set your scale to zero. And you want to do that after you purge because when you purge it might add a little bit of weight. So I realize that the scale uh, reader is sitting on the scale. You don't want to do that because that's going to add weight to the scale. Uh, but I have it upright a little bit so that you guys can kind of see, hopefully see the numbers on it. And so you can kind of see what the display is doing. So the first thing I want to do is zero it out before I start the recovery process. And this tear button here, that'll zero it out. So again, it's kind of hard to see on the video, but my scale reads a true zero now. Okay, so now I have my scale set up over here, set to zero. I hit tear on it. It's bouncing around a little bit, but it's pretty much zero. Um, I've opened up my gauges, I've opened up my valves, and I've purged through until I have liquid coming out here. So all we need to do now is run the machine and open up this blue valve, and then we just wait until our gauges read below zero, and then we know we're fully recovered. So we'll come back to that in a little bit when I'm down. I'll show you what the gauges look like when we're empty. Turn this on, open up your gauges, open up the valves on your machine, purge your liquid, zero your scale, and now away we go. Open up your knob and, and let it go until it's empty. We'll be back when it's empty. So looking at this thing now, you can see that our scale pretty much has stopped dropping or adding weight. And so that's showing that we're pretty well empty. Also, the, our gauge over here, it's hard to see through the video, but our gauge here is zero, or just below zero actually. So that should indicate that we're empty, but there's one step you guys need to take just to verify that we're empty, and that's closing these gauges. Go ahead and let the uh, recovery machine run close these gauges to isolate the system and watch for that low side needle to come back up. If that low side needle comes up a little bit, then you're not empty yet. You gotta keep going. As you see, since we've been sitting here, we picked up another quarter ounce. So even though it looks like it's empty, there's still a little bit in there kind of migrating out. But I think it's close to done, so let's close these gauges down. Make sure that needle stays below zero. That means all the refrigerants out of there. needle didn't come up. In fact, it usually comes up a, a hair, but this time it didn't come up at all. So I'd say we're empty at three pounds, 10 ounces of recovered refrigerant. Now I know that this machine holds more than that. It was in a partial uh, charge when I got here. And that's why the tank had refrigerant in it earlier. I showed you without opening the valve because I knew it had refrigerant in it. Some of it was out of this machine. Part of the reason I picked this machine is because I knew it would go faster because it was partially empty to begin with. So that won't be the true amount of refrigerant, which is good because I want to illustrate recharging it when we don't quite know how much that 
we got out of it or if we got the right amount out of it. So open these gauges back up. And you'll see that indeed the needle did come back down just a hair. So we'll give that a second to make sure it doesn't pull any more weight out. Uh, maybe a quarter ounce. It's pretty empty though, so let's go through the process of shutting this down at the end of your recovery process. Okay, so I finished my recovery process. So just like we did when we purged, we opened everything up towards the tank. Now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to close everything on our way towards the tank, starting with the gauges first. done recovering you're ready to pull a vacuum on this machine after you do the repair okay I zoomed back in on the scale just so I could show you guys when we thought we were done recovering from the machine we had three pounds ten ounces when I got done bleeding all the hoses through and purging the machine we ended up at three pounds fourteen ounces so between our hoses and the machine and all of that uh, it ended up adding another three ounces or so into that tank. So that's that's all the stuff that we purged out of the hoses and the recovery machine into that tank on that last process that I just showed you. Okay, so now I'm going to hook up my vacuum pump and we'll go through that vacuum procedure. Okay, so that was the recovery part. So stick with me now and part two and part three will cover pulling a vacuum down to the required vacuum levels and then recharging the equipment. This has been Refrigerant Recovery. Thank you.